You're watching The Dish with Dallas. There you go. Let's talk about Love Life and Rico. So, tell us how you met Rico. How I honestly met Rico or how I met Rico? <laughs> That's a gag. <laughs> Oh no! Which which one? Which one? You? Which one you want? To do? I want both. All right. So, um, most people know me to know uh, to have dated Rico after the Cuffin season show, which is true. Okay. You over dating? You okay? You were dating after the Cuffin season show? Actually, during the Cuffin D season show. But nobody knew that. Everybody in the house knew. So explain the cover season show for the people that don't know because everybody doesn't know about the cover. Did the show come out? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Oh, shit. I don't fuck with them. Okay. Why you don't fuck with them? Well, I'll tell you the whole scoop. Well, okay. Go ahead. Long story Give short. Give it to us. Um, I actually met Rico when he was dating somebody else. Nothing sexual, nothing lustful. It was kind of like, you know, hey, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then time went by and I didn't see Rico, you know, I just heard about him like he's a big dog in Atlanta, you know, as far as like what he's into and what he does. And I just respected that. I was like, cool, he's a savage just like I am, mm -hmm. you know, left like that. And I respect um, who he was dating. I was, you know, business partner with him when we was trying to do music or whatever and then really work out. Um, and then, um, I ended up seeing it, Rico at the club one time, we had a conversation or whatever, and you know, um, <laughs> we had a conversation in the bathroom, and uh, that's all I say, but he wasn't oh with God. his ex at the time, mm -hmm. and I wasn't expecting that, neither was he, and then, next day, uh, Rico actually blocked me on Instagram, because I, he was messaging me, and I didn't hear from him. And then the very next time I heard from him was about cuffing season. And that was like a year or so later. Wait, we said when you heard from him, it was about cuffing season? Yeah. So how, how how was that set up? Like, who was the person who was looking for, looking to be cuffed? Rico was the bachelor on okay. the show. He was the bachelor. Mm -hmm. Did he reach out to you to become one of the people who well, was... he did, but one of the producers of the show had already hit me up. So when Rico asked me, I was like, well, yeah, I'll do it for you, but I don't really fuck with Signal because I already work with Signal 23. Um, and if you want to edit that part, I, yeah, I work for a fucked up, jacked up, whack ass company before, and I didn't want to work with them, but because Rico asked me to, I did it. Um, I said, I told him at the time I was living in Texas, I had moved away from Atlanta, and I was like, yeah, for you, I'll do it, cool. And that was it. I ended up coming on the show. <laughs> And then we end up liking each other, like really like the show. I feel like everybody came there to get their coin because I know I did. So it was you and how many other people? It was a lot of us. I think like nine or twelve people. I can't remember the exact number. So how was what was the concept of the show? Like how did it? How was the setup? It was kind of like um, like Flavor Love, a ghetto EBC ass version of. You know, flavor of love, or I love New York. <laughs> it was, it was, it was a food stand voucher. Oh shit! It was a Section Eight voucher. I, I know you had gotten into it with a couple of the other contestants. Mm -hmm. I would say, what was that about? Most times that I got into it with them, honestly, um, was because of the respect thing. They felt like um, I feel like a lot of them was intimidated because, I mean, I am Cash De Niro, bitch. And they were nobodies. They wasn't. And uh -huh. I respect them for that. I never said, you know, not that they're not nobodies. I'll say this. And they have a brand. They wasn't doing porn. They wasn't strippers. They wasn't singers. They was regular people that were casting for the show. Mm -hmm. And the biggest problem that I had was I didn't disrespect you. I didn't call you out your name. I didn't say anything about your motherfucking mama, you know, or nothing like that. So why would you make me feel like I'm nothing because I'm a porn star? Mm -hmm. And when I, when I did the show, I actually did my challenges to try to win because the more and more I was in the house uh, the more and more I like Rico you know and I feel like you like me and you know so when you were in the house and you were doing the challenges you and Rico had already hooked up like you guys were already not like not like that like 
this, but not like that. You know what I'm saying? It was like, do you feel like maybe he was more interested in you than everybody else in the house? No. No? At the beginning of the show, only because I honestly felt like after this show, I'm going to go back to Texas. And at the beginning, I felt like Rico was like, I'm just here to do this so I can go back. I didn't foresee dating because that wasn't something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. That's something I didn't want, you know. And I feel like he had just fresh got out of a relationship. And I feel like he didn't want to do it. He just did it to do the show. But the more and more we was in the house, it just, they, they really had a show. If they really would have treated us right, paid us. And, and would tell the motherfucking truth they really had a couple seasons because me and Rico actually really did fall in love. Okay. Okay, so the finale. I remember hearing about the finale. Like, you and him were already together and you all had already come out in public together before the finale actually mm -hmm. aired. So is that why you don't fuck with them? Or was well, it, was that Did that cause a riff? No. The, well, after the show which they recorded like 16 18 episodes they told us we could not publicly say we were together mm -hmm. which is tough because we live in Atlanta we're going out together people see us they know the fuck me and him are so you basically won yeah I, yeah, I won okay. <laughs> yeah I won so you won and you contractually you could not or they asked you not to say they asked oh. us not and we still did only because there was times um and the cast knows this. I'm, I'm only gonna tell you facts i'm never gonna down a black man or a company but i'm gonna tell you facts facts this shit i have to deal with and i've come so far for somebody to fuck me out of my money or fuck the money treat me like i ain't shit. Mm -hmm. and the fact of the matter is i won the show fair and square Hence, I'm still with Rico. Mm -hmm. Hence, how many if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. And our, um, the whole experience was horrible only because they the finale part was the winner of Cuffin' Season. And you'll hear it on the show if you subscribe to that bullshit. They said the winner of Cuffin' Season will win an all expense paid trip to Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And that's not what it was. What was it? What it was is that. They ran out of money. They bit off more than they could chew. They didn't have a budget for this project. They sat there and brought us to Puerto Rico. I spent almost $600 on my account because um, the first night we was there, like the list goes on. And like, I ain't even going into details because there's nothing I need to prove. The, the fact that it was not an all expense paid trip. So you basically paid for your, you paid yes. your way in. Yes. And, and the, 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 he wanted to film us being on the beach, giving a proposal. I had already asked Rico to marry me. And that was way before the show. Uh, us going to Puerto Rico, I was having a conversation. I was like, look, I don't want a boyfriend. I want to get married. Mm -hmm. He was like, I want the same thing. So they wanted us to be all on camera, on the beach, proposing and shit. And then the last day of filming, I told them we're not going to film. Mm -hmm. Because payday came on the 20th of February. Glory to God. And what day was this? That We was in Puerto Rico. It was supposed to be a payday. Mm -hmm. We did not get paid. Neither did his staff get paid, which his staff was talking shit about the whole ordeal. Rico staff? No. Signal 23. Oh. The staff that came to Puerto Rico. To film and produce mm -hmm. the show. There was one um, person on the on the production side that works for Signal. We was buying him cigarettes, you know, make sure he was straight because he did not get paid. And then when it was time to get on the plane, um, you know, per his cousin that works for him at that time and the other girl that was like um they that because we told him we weren't going to film that last day because i wasn't he told them at that time well they can figure out how they can get to the airport or whatever we're not going we're in puerto rico you know what i'm saying and if you want to talk about contract or mere words you broke in both of those there's a breaching contract when you I mean, you know, if you if you say you're gonna do something, you need to do it. You need to be a man of your word, and that's not what it was. And um, it was just really ugly. Um, I I came for them only because they really tried the shit out of us. And then when we came to the airport to leave, I paid out of my account fifty dollars for one of their employees 
to put his bag on the plane so he can get back to Atlanta because they did not get paid. And he gave two fucks about his bag. But you know who paid it? Me. Okay. So, amidst all the drama, mm -hmm. you and Rico are still together. Mm -hmm. um, you're engaged. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. When is the wedding? Have you guys set a date yet? We gonna yeah. see about the wedding. Yeah, yeah. He's not that on the couch. Yeah, he's out. Um, we was actually gonna get married months earlier, but we put it off. Uh huh. Only because my dad said that he would like for us to wait at least a year. Mm -hmm. So December will be a whole year that, you know, we've known each other. Only out of honor and respect to my dad, I did that. Now, so. during this year, did your dad suggest that you guys did, like live together? Or like, how does how that, what the stipulation? Nothing, it was just like, he didn't, you know, it wasn't an ex extreme or anything. It was just kind of like, you know, I'm happy for you. I love you, mm -hmm. I support you, but what's wrong with waiting? You know, why do you have to do it now or whatever? Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, well, I mean, if that's all my dad requires, then I talked to Rico, he's like, well, I'm with it. So that's why we, in December, you know, we'll be doing the do. Okay. So do you guys want to have kids? Like, how do you envision your future with Rico? So Rico wants kids. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really a big kid, kid type of person. But considering the stuff I have gone have gone through, uh, I wouldn't mind more kids. Mm -hmm. um, he wants a little girl. I've never had a daughter, so I mean, I feel like um, kids are like everything. So I think you know, maybe one day we will, you know. But it, Rico gonna be the baby daddy. I'm just gonna be the other daddy. <laughs> he the baby daddy, mom the other daddy. Okay. So, um, you know, we talked about the adult entertainment thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember you saying, you know, porn is your past. Like, you don't want to do that anymore. But now you have your OnlyFans page. Mm -hmm. So, what made you want to start the OnlyFans page? Because I'm really ass nigga. Let me tell you, <laughs> when life gives you limits. <laughs> You put that bitch in some Kool-Aid. So what I did was, yeah, you put it in Kool-Aid. Red, we red, Kool -Aid red, red. <laughs> and I feel like I may have stopped something for now or didn't want to do it at all, but I'm human. I can change my motherfucking mind. And at this time, I did the OnlyFans type deal only because I had um, I had me a good job, mm -hmm. good nice salary paying job. Um, they also knew I did porn too. Big ups for y'all for hiring me. This is the nonprofit organization. Yes, the nonprofit organization I work for. And then uh, actually a couple of weeks ago, um, they had said, "Hey, you're gonna have to furlough until the eighth because we don't have funding. Atlanta wasn't funding um, the program or whatever the organization." So then I freaked out. That's the first time in a long time I felt like, oh my God, like, how, how am I gonna make, bitch, I'm not selling pussy no more. Like, <laughs> you know, like I'm not, you know, like Cash Neal can't work at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. He can't work at Walmart. Not that, not, not that I can't, but because of the attention, the, um, and I feel like um, I like this job. So when they, said you know this potentially could happen i, I talked to rico and i was like you know we might have to go this route mm -hmm. because we still gotta eat yeah. you know um and he was with it so that's why i remember this so let me go back for a second because when you first considered okay let me do porn mm -hmm. at some point you've had a regular job and you know that the chances of you doing porn there's a possibility that if you get to a certain level of stardom and it doesn't work out that you may not be able to get another job because you would have been so well known. Did you ever fear like, oh my God, you know, what am I gonna do? Like, I'm too well known at this point. Like I can't go back to normalcy. Well, I felt that way until this previous job I had proved that wrong. Cause they I reached out like, to you. Yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. didn't, I didn't apply for this job. 
I wasn't thinking about this job. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I didn't. I was really trying to go into like um, self employment and having my own business type. So honestly, when I got this job, the boss was like, "Hey, I've been looking for you." And I was mm -hmm. like, "Me?" I was on lunch date with my best friend, and uh, he was like, "Yeah, I've been looking for you. Uh, I want to give you this job." He said the Lord told him to give me the job. That's amazing. So I took the job. Mm -hmm. Nice salary, everything was going good. And then that happened and it didn't mean the end of the world. It was just like, I mean, I paid mad child support, I got mad bills and I got a man. I got a certain lifestyle I want to keep up, certain things I want to do. Mm -hmm. So wisdom tells you, okay, bitch, you may not fit out around in every other arena, but what can you do? Mm -hmm. I sell fantasy. If I if I if I could make a patty pie, I would sell that bitch. <laughs> you feel me? And at the time it works. Um, I feel like you know whether people feel like oh he's contradicting her. I would do everything I can to motherfucking survive. You know what I'm saying? Just like I've done before when I had absolutely nothing mm -hmm. to when I had a whole bunch of money to be in the predicament of transition. I'm going. I'm going to make it. Okay. I'm going to make it. Okay. So. You know that my show, it's uh, generally based around ballroom. Mm -hmm. um, oh, wow. Uh, hand performance. Have you ever been, do you have any house affiliation? Like, have you ever been a part of a house that asked to be a part of any type of um, organization? No. Include, you know, involved in ballroom? Never? Never. I've actually only been in one bar in my life and it was here in DC. And at the time I was a stripper. Um, and one of the MCs got on the mic and was like, um, cause he, before he got on the mic, he was like, come out there and walk ball. And I was like, the fuck, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm really a boy boy. Like, I don't, I didn't, I've never seen, you know, I've seen it in Atlanta where they, they get it, mm -hmm. but I wasn't into it. Not that I don't like it. It's just, it's, it's just don't know. Yeah. I don't know nothing about, you know, when they fall on the floor and then everybody go, dude. You know what I'm saying? So it, I was intrigued by it because I was like, wow, this is really dope, you know? And the dude got on the mic. He was like, how you going to be a, a stripper and you, you you won't even come out here and walk ball? Oh, because you was just a stripper. You were just you were just stripping at the time. At the time. And I just happened to show up with a friend that invited me. He was like, let's go to a bar. I was like, a ball? Mm -hmm. You want me to dress up? He was like, no, bitch. It's a, it's a ball. You do this. Da, da, da. I was like, okay, well, I'll go. You know, and uh, I liked it, but I've never uh, went to a bar after that. I've never had somebody say, come walk and give this face or that, you know, <laughs> the audience me. I think it's dope, but you know. Okay. Yeah. So, how did you get started in the industry? Um, I was on a show called About Him. Well, I'm just gonna say I did a web series previously that required a lot of nudity um we did sex simulations that um basically we weren't really having sex we just were pretending but it looked very real and porn companies started reaching out to me the number got higher and um i signed exclusively to black boys addictions in 2017 and i was signed to them for a year. I was about to re-sign before cuffing season. I was gonna go back to New York before I met Cash. And um, we had a heart to heart and really realized that I was you know, doing something to where I didn't love myself or have much respect for myself. And he showed me that I can, I can love again and be loved and love somebody. Aw. So your first meeting, it's the same? It was in the house. When I felt that way. That way? Yeah. Okay. So how did you feel about all the other contestants? Like, did you know immediately that Cash was the one? Or did did it take time? Yeah, it took time. Like, I was in that, we was in that house for probably three days. And it was crazy because it was like we had to, they made it look like we were there for a week or a month. When we was really just there for three days. Are you serious? Outfit changes. We, we had, like, changed outfits like five times a day. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. So, um... They had to prove themselves to me within three days, basically. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, like he's cashing around Rico Pruitt. Most of the guys was feeling me. They wanted to be with me, but I was there for a check. I didn't want to do anything. I, my rule, me and the producers even was like made a joke about it. It was like, they was like, you do not fall in love. You do not even, you know, 
fuck with them like that. This is just go to Puerto Rico and then go our separate ways type shit. Um, and it was like that until I actually got the no cash. I really kept my distance from him for that exact reason. Like I already knew that I was kind of like him. And it was just like, I don't want to feel that way anymore. Did you feel the distance cash? A little bit. Yeah, I did. <coughs> you felt about that? Um, I just took it as, I kind of like am a vibe type person. So when somebody shows me something, I just kind of like, I understood like, I'm going back to Texas. He going back wherever he was. I didn't yeah. care. That's one thing we did do. We did, like in the house, we, we had an understanding. And we already knew prior to the, prior to going to Puerto Rico because we didn't know that we were going to end up together. We both had an understanding that, hey, we like each other. We feel each other. We might see what's going to happen outside of this house. You're going to win. I like you, but I really don't want anything more than just what we have right now. And... But just shit, he was lying. <laughs> <laughs> but when we got to Puerto Rico, the whole dynamic changed because it brought us closer to know that the producers really didn't give a fuck about us. Well, the producer, the one like the one who had got all this shit orchestrated, basically the all expense paid trip. We both had to come out of our accounts with, um, you know, buying us food and just getting stuff that we needed while we were there in Puerto Rico. The only thing he did pay for was the plane ticket. Mm -hmm. So do you guys regret? Doing the show at all? Mm -hmm. I'm happy that I met him. I'm happy that everything transpired the way it did. Because one thing that Cash did say during the interview, and I'm happy that he did say, was that a lot of the times, you know, you have people around you telling you great things about yourself and are even negative things. And sometimes, like he said, the good things will outweigh the bad things, and you won't see things. Because one thing that people don't know is the production company that did produce in most production companies even porn they make way more money than they pay us and they treat us like shit and at the time we were filming we were doing things to where we were going to be on and above to what we was expected to do and we wasn't even getting paid and the people that were filming us wasn't getting paid and we was just like we ain't doing that shit no more if we don't have the money or if we don't have it or if we don't pay for it we're not doing it and i'm, I'm gonna add something to that and he's exactly right and you know not that i'm anybody better but as somebody that sells fantasy, somebody that has escorted, somebody that has made coin off selling pussy, <coughs> or booty hole, however, whatever is grammatically correct for you niggas, to let me ride dildos, to have me expose my body on a show um, that I agreed to take your little pay, and you didn't even honor that as a man in your right. word. It, it disrespects and it demeans my value. And that was that's what pisses me and off. And the biggest thing about it is like like he said, he wanted to do it was for yeah, me because of me. Because one thing about it, and I still do see the vision that the production company, not only that production company, but every production company that I work with, I see some type of vision in them. That's why I do it because it's never been about the money. I always see something in like that production or the person I'm with or the person I'm working with because I'm like, you know what? I respect that and we can make something happen Cause it's and most impact. of the time these motherfuckers are still eating off of me to this day and i don't care because now i'm making well we making an open where we can yes, support God. our families and support people mm -hmm. that we you know support us support those ridiculous support income and i feel like honestly even though that was a bad experience we could say a lot of negative shit about them we can mm -hmm. care less it's mm -hmm. not even about the negative thing it's we're glad we had no pain. We're glad we had the disrespect. We're glad yeah. mm -hmm. we had that hurtful feeling to feel. at the end feel. of the day, people don't even know that. And I'm excited that we are doing this because we are, he has his own business going. But one thing I am excited that we're doing together, we have an LLC called the De Niro Pruitt. And we're going to start our production company very soon where we're going to start making our own content. And we're going to pay people because we're going to do it the right way. That it takes money to do something. You know what I'm saying? If it was for free, you should have told me. And I would have did it because I'm a nice guy. Yeah. But yeah. don't you never tell me as a man or a businessman or a fucking and boss. And that's what hurts the that most is that he is still do. using young black gay men to this day. And one thing that I'm going to do to prevent that is start, or we're going to do to prevent that is start our own production company to pay these, uh, pay these talent in the right way. You know, because a lot of the times people move to Atlanta, somebody, because that's what happened to me, basically. I was, um, even though I did reach out to the production company, I moved to Atlanta and 
my mind, they telling me that A to Z is going to be taken care of and I'm having to get everything taken place. I'm going out of my way to do things to make myself comfortable. I actually had to come out of my pocket for hotels, Airbnbs, um, gas money, not even to mention like stuff that happened behind the scenes with uh, people. But In so many words, it was it's fun, it's, it's, it's a term I like to use called rape. Yeah. When people will That's rape your I gift feel. and suck what they can out of you because at the end of the day, even though Sigma 23 is Sigma 23, nobody knows who the fuck Sigma 23 Nobody knows who Henderson Maddox is. They <coughs> he know can who, never be they the know, face of his They know who Rico Pruitt is. Even though, you know, not saying Black Rain ain't the shit, but don't nobody know the boss name of Black Rain. Mm -hmm. They know, they even if you bring my name as Cash De Niro, they don't know me from Black Rain if they ain't a subscriber or a follow on Twitter, or, you know, if they watch my shit for free on porn. We're household names, and he knew he had some of them in the cast. Um, just do right. But all in all, I'm glad they did that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It it sometimes it's okay if people do that. You know what I'm saying? Only because God gives you something way better. And at, if I didn't get any coin, I got my man. <laughs> And as much as my man said this before, he said, you know what? Uh, honestly, for somebody that sells sex and sells lust, that can never sell love. Going yeah. back to when I was talking about singing, mm -hmm. you can give lust because at the end of the day, I can take off my shirt right now or show my body parts or show you my booty hole and you'll be intrigued by it because it draws that part of a man that is lustful. But you can never sell love because and you only know what love is. And, you know, yeah. Um, so loyalty and all that shit because like a lot of the times that's why these production companies tend to reach out to porn stars and adult entertainers because they know we're with the shit because they know a lot of the times real actors well i don't even consider real actors because first and foremost adult entertaining is acting it most is. of the shit you're selling a fantasy and actors they sell sex to well i was gonna ask that did you guys when, when you are put like in the scenes <clears throat> without each other were there times when you enjoyed it or was it always like this is just work i'm just acting it's both it's, i mean it's... you have to in in, a, in so much you have to put yourself that's why most of the time i did i was fucked up i was on drugs drink all type of shit you have to put yourself in that mind state where this is um enjoyable for me because you want to sell that fantasy to the viewer you want to be like oh yes this is some good dick or, oh yes this is some good ass like you want to show that you actually like it mm -hmm. so in that because my whole thing is not no shade to any of my co hosts or, i mean uh co-stars that was on the thing <laughs> sometimes it'll be whack and you still gotta in real be life like, <laughs> in real yes. life i <laughs> probably would never approach any of them sexually not because they're bad people, it's just that's what was chosen, what was given for me or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I had a right to decline, but I didn't. I mean, there's certain people I work for, with for certain reasons, you know, and I feel like um, fantasy goes a long way when it comes to the perception of what people like. What you don't like, 10 million people love. Mm -hmm. And my whole thing is like, when it comes to pleasing people, that's why I say I really don't give a fuck what people think, because we all have perceptions of anything we're all inadequate. We're in some shape, form, or fashion. So when it comes to fantasy, fantasy looks through the eyes of what is appealing, what is appealing to certain individuals or a group of people. But at the end of the day, uh, I think even when I was on set doing porn, I just did what I would do mm -hmm. if I met a nigga around the corner or if I was fucking my boyfriend. I would, you know, give that because I'm yeah, good. Sometimes you have to fantasize about some other body, somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta you do know, what you gotta do to put in that in that mind frame. Cause some of them, you know, yeah. Don't no, don't even. Yeah, I'm about to say something. Okay. But like, you know, respectfully, so yeah. Um, I feel like it's both. Most of it is, you know, you're gonna get paid this coin. Oh yeah, that's what excites um, me too. The fame plays a role. Yeah. Bookings, going places, traveling, recognition. Who's your favorite Christmas? place to travel? <coughs> From your, you know, after doing a couple films, and you get your book as like. What you was, mean vacay or be booked? Like which? which um, 
like to just so i'm pretty sure the bookends there is work but have you gone out to work and enjoyed the work and been like oh this city is lit like they showed oh, yeah. so much love mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. like which city do would you say showed you the most love um i feel like I don't know. I never thought about who showed more love. Or were you just I was just love? honored to come. Like I, whether there was five hundred people there or five people. I've mm -hmm. had those bookings where I went to country hit towns and it's just like I'm just glad to come. I mean I'm gonna be America's sweetheart this year. I'm gonna keep it real gut. <laughs> New York was lit. I love get, being booked in New York. I love turning up in New York. Mm -hmm. And um I have to say DC is my second favorite. Oh. And after that, Miami. My top three. Now I've been booked in DC a couple times, but there's certain places. DC show love. They do. But I I've, I've I've been seen, booked. I ain't been booked book a lot here. I and I haven't seen you all individually and in, well, of course I've seen you in DC, but when in you Miami all just the turn up. I would say the club life is it's it is. It's mm -hmm. fun, but being booked there isn't what it is, but going out to just have fun is is fun. I've been a witness to you guys together in DC and people being like, "Oh my god, you guys are so cute together!" Like and just so positive. Like I know you get a lot of oh they just porn stars, but I've seen a lot of people. That's say, what I love about DC. They're like, yeah, "Yo, you guys are so cute together. Like stick together. Don't let people, don't let anyone interfere with your relationship." Yeah, like it those are the things. Of, like I, I think the reason why both. Well, I don't know about him, but I. I live in Atlanta and I love living in Atlanta because they do, you know, they, they have somewhat respect for us. Like they, yeah, I will say that because a lot of people, like when we first started going out, people were looking at us crazy or stuff like that. But people were like, Oh my God, it makes sense. I love to see y'all together. Don't let anybody fuck up what y'all got going mm -hmm. on. So I honestly, can, and I agree with him, honestly, the best city that we've ever been booked that's for why we live in was our own because the, our birthday party proved everything. Um, when we had a booking together, um, we actually got booked together before we even dated, but then we ended up dating each other and we packed that club out and it was just a lot of love and support. You know how you have an event, you be like, bitch, I don't this shit. Like, it was like mm -hmm. pride. Yeah, it, it was it pride was in so the club. Wild. So it was like... In December though. Yeah, in the cold, on our birthdays, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, <laughs> you know, um, not that anywhere else didn't show love. I just feel like Atlanta, um, and I, I know a lot of people think Atlanta's shady or is um, no love there, and it can be with certain individuals, but when people show you, they fuck I with you. I feel like one thing about this, and like, like we both said it, one thing that people do like and they gravitate us to is they know that this love is genuine. It's not even to be, uh, it's not even to be corny or anything like that. <clears throat> like, it's really like to a point where, like he said, um, when I said about look, selling love instead of lust, like they see that we actually have love for each other. Like, and it's not just sexual. We have a connection where. Ain't nobody gonna fuck with him. I'm gonna do whatever I need to do to make sure he eat. He gonna do whatever he need to do to make sure I eat. And that's love. Like, whether we mad at each other, whether we are, you know, tired, we gonna still make sure that the other one is satisfied and happy. And that's one thing that I can say that I love about him is that he makes sure, even if I'm just sitting here not eat, just in my phone or something, what's wrong? Are you okay? Like, it's annoying as fuck, but it's good to know that somebody <laughs> actually cares about you, you know? Okay, we, we tight. I love it. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Yes, we love Congratulations. You. I appreciate you for including me in the interview. Of course. Listen, I I met you when you came to DC. Oh my God. Then we went to Secrets. Mm, yeah. And I had already I was already a fan. Oh, we was lit. We, we, was, like, we were super lit. <laughs> that was um, and when I reached out to to Cash about when he called me, um, was it last night? Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, originally I planned to do it in Atlanta. I was telling this earlier, um, but when I found out she was in town, I was like, well, I just brought the show back. Um, and the majority of my guests were ballroom, so I was asking him a lot of stuff about ballroom um, because I used to be active in ballroom. And then right. I found my voice with interviewing. Mm -hmm. And I gave up the show and I came to Atlanta 
when we were there when um we went for PJ's birthday mm-hmm. and I haven't been to Atlanta in so many years and so many people was just like, What happened to the show? Like what's going on? And I it yeah. it was so much love. That, that was really seven love. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, What the fuck? Like maybe I really need to think sit back and reconsider doing the show again. Mm-hmm. Um my it's show. needed, especially in the ballroom community. Yeah. I, I yeah. no not, not anymore. And at one the, point... It, yeah, it's nobody... Yeah. It, unless they go live and talk about it. Okay. Yes. Now, at one point, it was me, it was Luna, it was Vicky Gotti, and then they had the radio shows and ballroom, and people would come on and they would be interviewed, but um, the, the void needs to be filled. And you're here for it. And I'm here for it. Yeah. And... Um, I would have included. I, I didn't. I knew you were. They told me well, you were here, but I was like, I'm here. "Yes, I'm I was like, I didn't know if he was here or not." But no, um, yeah. I know a lot of people that are really, really big fans of you all, and they're gonna love this. Um, I think it's amazing because, and we're gonna love you too. Like, let us know when it's ready. We'll share it, promote it on our socials. Yes, get y'all out there. Yeah. It's, it's gonna be lit. And then when we come to Atlanta. That's what I was getting to when I was, the plan was to do it in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. We're still coming to Atlanta, and we would love to do it again, and we can kind of go. Yeah, do a like an um, update, because we got yes. some, like I said, we got some stuff in the making, and we hopefully do. we can yeah, have it. Yeah, we'll have it done by the end, by the time y'all get done, so. That's popping. Yeah. We're super excited to come down, and I will let y'all know when it's ready. Thank you, um, guys. Just so y'all know, we've been up since. Wait, what time did y'all get here? What time did we, did we go out? You want to look at my phone? It's What's, 5 o'clock. Oh my God, it's 5 o'clock. <laughs> you I got to be up in an hour for work. Oh right, my God. You might well not even go to sleep. I know, I might as well just go ahead and just dug it out. But I'm going to take a little cat nap. Yeah. But thank you guys for coming. I really do appreciate you. No, we appreciate it. This was lit.